A resurgence of bone carving has been taking place in a small Taranaki town as a national community of artists gather annually to share their skills. This year's Moko Bone Carving Symposium has just wrapped up. Organiser of the symposium, Mike Brown, is with us now. Tenakwe, Mike, thanks for joining us. Tenakwe. Well, it's good to talk to you again. These symposiums are unique in the world, right? Why do you feel it's important that they continue? Well, in New Zealand, for, for a start, we've got a great history of bone carving. Uh, we haven't had any coordinated effort to gather bone carvers into strengthen skills, um, encourage carvers and and inject new carvers into the art. So uh, I think it's been really good that we've been able to start something that's developing some momentum and we're getting uh, benefits from that now after the three, after the four or five years that we've mm. been running. Now this is obviously a passion piece for you and I, and I love that you're still driving this. What sorts of impacts do you believe these annual symposiums have had and are having on the national bone carving community? Well, uh, just to give you an indication, we started a Facebook page when we started doing the symposiums and we now have three and a half thousand followers. Uh, two thirds of those would be Māori, uh, really, really interested in what's happening in the revival of bone carving. And uh, we, you know, carvers work away on their own. Uh, this is giving them an opportunity to come together and to be encouraged and inspired uh, by other carvers. So mm. uh, we have, you know, special guest carvers come and they bring their expertise and they build the skills of all of the carvers. Mike, what are some of the highlights of this year's symposium? Well, I think well, this year was the first time that we went up to the uh, Maniaroa Marae for our welcome mm, mm. and many of us stayed at the Marae. Uh, that was a highlight, definitely. Uh, but also just the enthusiasm, the buzz, the palpable energy within the room. We, we carve in the Moko Hall and we had uh, at various times between 50 and 60 carvers working away together. And the, uh, the energy, the zip, the unity, the excitement, to me that, that spoke volumes. We had many, many people come through from the community and from uh, communities abroad, uh, from far away actually to join us and uh, have a look at what was going on and, and people were just amazed at what was happening. And how did it feel staying at the Maniaroa Marae, uh, particularly this year? How much do you feel it helped to support the carvers and, and continue to enhance their art? Well, uh, you know, for, for some it was the first time ever to, uh, to visit a marae and for many it was the first time to stay on a marae so it was a wonderful experience. Uh, it was a highlight for many, many people. And uh, the people at Maniaroa uh, looked after us really, really well uh, right from the beginning. And then we closed out at the end of the symposium yesterday in the afternoon. And, uh, you know, people gave each other hugs, hongi, uh, and went on their way. It was a great way to start and a great way to finish. And I think also uh, we, we learned another dimension just by the descriptions and the explanations of the Po. And the, I mean, Maniaroa Marae is heavily carved. They've got mm. a wonderful Po. And uh, the explanations about uh, the tupuna that they represent, uh, the spiritual aspect of carving that was so uh, obvious in that room uh, really did influence carvers. And what we are trying to do is, is drop people onto a third dimension with their carving, not just doing pretty pictures on bone and carving it out, but actually thinking more deeply about the, uh, you know, the animal from which the bone has come, mm -hmm. uh, respecting that, the material, uh, the design, having uh, some connection to who you are, and then, um, you know, producing beautiful pieces that have uh, some power within them, not just superficial pieces. So, it, I mean, to go to the marae was a was the way to go. Well, how Absolutely. important is it to you then that uh, iwi and local iwi are involved in these symposiums? Oh, really, very important. Right from the word go, back in 2016, I met with uh, Daniel Ormsby, who, uh, you know, leads the Nati Maniapoto Arts Collective um, based up in Waitomo. And Daniel pretty much adopted me as an artist into his collective of carvers and, uh, and artists. So I've rubbed shoulders with them and, and it's been such a, a wonderful experience for me to be included. Mm. Uh, and and for, 
for, and then for the Marai to approach us after some years of operation and say, look, we, we love what you're doing. We want to embrace that. We'd like to be part of that. And we'd like you to come up to our special place and share it with us uh, has been fantastic. It's, it's right from the word go. It's been our objective to share what we do with the people of the yeah, land yeah. who've been carving bone for centuries. Yo, how does it feel then to have a special uh, guest carver coming from Te Puya in Rotorua? Stacey Jordine was our special guest carver. Uh, the tumu at, uh, for bone and stone carving at uh, Te Puya in Rotorua. And that was very special for us. He was the first Māori special guest carver that we've had. And we've always wanted to provide a platform for Māori art among the carvers. We've, we're a mixed bag. Mm -hmm. People from, oh, maybe 15 different nations gather to carve. One of our special guest carvers was Japanese, taught us about uh, Neske carving wow. and introduced us to new tools and how to stain with organic stains. Stacy was able to bring to us an understanding of the Māori worldview with respect to art. And uh, he did that so generously and so sensitively. People responded to him readily. Uh, he, he was a fantastic person to have. I love what you're doing. Mike Brown, organiser of the Morco Bone Carving Symposium. Thank you so much for your time and congratulations on another year bringing carvers together or bone carvers together. Yep. Nga mihi.